Today we are talking about how do we give our youth wisdom? How do we give the current generation something to hope for? How do we give them a sense of self that is beyond uh, the internet, beyond social media, beyond that which they can put up on their uh, 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 social media posts and look for likes and, and really get the sense that the world only loves them if they are popular, if they are rich. Is that, that's not the way I grew up. You know, it, it was a different generation and, and we look at things. It's interesting because a lot of times people say they're really afraid with modern technology. And this is really the psychology of it all. They're afraid of modern technology. The fear of the modern technology is not what it can do for us or not what, um, how much more advanced it gets until, until the fear is, gosh, what if artificial intelligence becomes self-aware? You know, if anybody ever watched the movies of Terminator, there were all these robots that were being made, but all of a sudden what happened down the road, technology all of a sudden became self-aware. It means it became its own entity. It, beca- it knew how to think for itself without human being input, without us programming it. And it became self-aware and all of a sudden it took over human beings. And that's really the fear, right? That artificial intelligence will all of a sudden become much more powerful than we are as humans. We created this mess and now it's taken over and it's going to uh, run our lives and it's going to, and we're going to be slaves to it because modern technology all of a sudden becomes its own person, you know, the computers or robots. And it's interesting because people say, gosh, yeah, that would be scary if that ever happened. My take is that's already happened. Not in the sense that modern technology has uh, become self-aware, but in the sense that it's taken over. How many people are a slave to modern technology? How many people can leave the house without their phone or not log into their social media account or go a day without their email? You know, I'd get home. When I get home, usually I, I kind of put my phone down and I don't check text messages anymore or anything like that. It's family time. I get home from work and it's like the old school days back when even before uh, answering machines, you know, if the phone rang, we would take messages. And we would say, well, you know, they're not here right now. We'll have them call you whenever they get back. And then you'd try to call the person back and you'd play phone tag. Well, we call phone tag now for a while. And you'd call back and hope that they were there. And if they're there, great. If they're not, well, we'll have to call them back later or tell them a good time to call me. Okay. And then we would tell them, hey, you know what? Today is six o'clock. Nobody used a phone. I'm waiting for a, t- a call from Tom. And he's going to call me between 6 and 6.15 because that's what I told him I'd be available. And and that's where his wife told him to call me. And so now we gotta we got to wait. Don't use the phone. I don't want it to be busy. Right. We had to do that. But it wasn't this question of, of gosh, now we got the cell phone that if somebody sends you a text message, it's almost like the cell phone better be connected to your brain and your brain better send waves to the phone. Because if you don't reply back in a few seconds, people are shocked or they think that you're being rude or you're ignoring them. When the reality is, no, I'm not ignoring you. I'm paying attention to my family. Just like in the old days, I put my phone down. I, I leave it to the side. Sometimes I have to take care of a few things if I know it's something pressing, but For the most part, I don't pick up my phone and my friends will say the next day, hey, I texted you last night. I said, oh, well, I probably found it this morning um, because that's when I'm going to I'm going to pick up my phone. But are we already slaves to artificial intelligence? Don't we already rely on our emotional well-being based on what our social media account tells us, based on how many people liked our post, our picture of a hamburger? You know, if people didn't like it, if people didn't like the idea that, you know, we just made this wonderful pie. Well, I, I've never cared if you're making great pie or, or a hamburger other than if we're going to go work together physically and we're going to go sit down and share a meal. Great. Let's talk about what we're going to eat. But we're already slaves to artificial intelligence. And it didn't even need to become self-aware. We made ourselves slave. We voluntarily slave ourselves to it. We're worried about the day that computers are going to take over and they're going to have their own knowledge and make us slaves. We are currently voluntarily becoming slaves. So what am I going to tell my kids? Where are you going to get your wisdom? I would say, put all that down, put away, you know, you can read the news, read the headlines, but that's about it. Because there's so many arguments that are being had uh, out there that really at the end of the day, aren't going to mean a whole heck of a lot. You know, when we get before the throne of God, that it's not going to mean anything. And so I'll open the book of Proverbs and I'll say, Hey, why don't we read a few, a few, my, my daughters and my son, why don't we sit down and we read a few uh, verses here. Let's look at Proverbs chapter six. Let's sit down and see what's really important. It says, this is Proverbs chapter six, verse 16. There are six things which the Lord hates, seven which are an abomination to him. And this is what it says. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, 
feet that make haste to run to evil, false witnesses who breathes out lies, a man who sows discord among brothers. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart always, tie them about your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and a teaching of light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. To preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of adventures, do not desire her beauty in your heart, and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. For a harlot may be hired for a loaf of bread, but an adulteress stalks a man's every life. Can a man carry fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Or can one walk upon hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. None who touches her will go unpunished. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he is hungry. And if he is caught, he will pay sevenfold, and he will give all the goods of his house. Who he commits adultery has no sense. He who does not destroy him, he who does it destroys himself. Wounds and dishonor will get, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. For jealousy makes a man furious, and he will not spare when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation, nor be appeased through your multiple gifts. You know, it's interesting. Um, these are pretty hard words sometimes to, to listen to, but are you ready to sit down with your kids and tell them, look, this is the truth. You know, there's things that God hates, right? Um, there's things that are not going to be good for him. My son, look at this. Listen to what, he, what, what this is saying. These are wise words. You know, don't have haughty eyes, a lying tongue, a hand that sheds innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run evil, a false witness. You know, all these things are important. And then it goes into saying, don't commit adultery. When was the last time we sat down with anybody and said, hey, you know what? Don't commit adultery. And they're going to say, what are you talking about? And really what this is saying is not that that's in your heart necessarily. What it's saying, watch out for the perils of the world. When was the last time we sat with our family and said, hey, you know, especially as I'm thinking about raising a son, listen here, you're going to be, there, there's lots of things in this world. And nowadays, especially with technology, it's so easy to get trapped, uh, you know, in sending messages or things like that, that gosh, nobody has to know, right? But at the end of the day, you might find this temptation and watch out because it's no good. It's a big lie. It's a big lie. You got to be careful with this. You know, the harlot hired for a loaf of bread, but an adulteress stocks a man's every life. You know, you, th you might think that it's, it sounds great for the moment, my son, but boy, you're, you're going to ruin your whole life. Is it worth it? Is it worth it or not? You know, you can sit there and be blind to all this and be sucked into video games and, and whatnot, but at some point you're going to grow up and you're going to find these things. A worthless person, a wicked man goes about with crooked speech, winks his eyes, scrapes his feet, points with his finger with perverted heart, devises evil, continually sowing discord. Therefore calamity will come upon him suddenly. In a moment he will be broken beyond healing. You know, this is important to talk about because we read this and we, I think are always giving warnings to our kids about things like this. Don't commit adultery. You know, or, or actually, we've got to ask ourselves, are we doing enough to give warnings? But it can go both ways. Don't commit adultery. You know, that's one of them. Be careful. Don't commit adultery. But then for my daughters, same thing. You know, you could be tempted too. Don't, don't commit adultery. Don't, you, you might find yourself in a situation where you feel neglected, where you feel um, that nobody cares about you and, and somebody comes by and they offer you a little bit of consolation. They offer you a kind word. Is that enough? for you to feel that, wow, this is really the direction I need to go in. You know, we look at each case individually, but you got to be careful of this. And this is the last thing that I read, the worthless person, a wicked man, crooked speech, winks his eyes, scrapes his feet, points with his finger, and with a perverse heart devises evil. We always tell people, be careful of that. Be careful of, of people because there, there can be evil in their hearts. How many times do we say, don't become that, my son, my daughter? We have that potential in our hearts too. We're not perfect. Don't become a worthless person. Don't become a wicked man. Don't, don't go out with a crooked speech and wink your eye and scrape your feet and point your finger and with a perverted heart devise evil. There's a potential for that in all of us, but that's scary. It's scary to think about. We always want to talk to our children from a, from a happy place in our hearts, from a place where we hope that we are on the good side of things. 
but we got to remember to warn them. You can easily be on the bad side of things. And why does this even matter? Why do, why do these proverbs even mean anything in today's day and age? Well, I was talking about social media, about the internet. We've got to ask ourselves, are, are we doing what's honest? A false witness who breathes out lies and a man who sows discord among brothers. That's what God hates. It's an abomination to him. Well, is it a false witness for me to post pictures uh, that I know might deceive people? There's nothing wrong with posting the happy holiday pictures and the family in front of the Christmas tree or, you know, the family sitting down to a nice Thanksgiving dinner and we post out our food and all that stuff. But are we being honest in our posts, you know, or are we purposefully posting things that we know are deceptive? Did I just stand next to a tree in my front yard and say that I was off on vacation in a tropical jungle, you know, to make people feel that my life is more exciting, to make me feel that my life is more exciting. I think we need to be honest with ourselves. This is where my life is right now. Because if you look out into the world, 99% of people are not having what we, what the world would consider exciting lives, but maybe what God considers exciting life, because the true life is led in the interior world, in the interior life, the interior castle, as St. Teresa of Avila tells us. That's where life is led with, with God. Are we telling our children that? Are we preparing them? Are we helping them to build that interior castle? You know, this passage on adultery and 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 the easy pitfalls of that in social media. I believe that there is actually a, a website somewhere where it encourages people to have an affair, you know, and you can sign up and it's supposed to be oh so discreet. I, few, I think a few years back it got uh, um, all the memberships were exposed or something like that. And it was a big deal because they said, oh, we promised privacy, but there's no privacy when it comes to these things and it's public. And that can be very, very challenging, very challenging. The book of Proverbs also gives us, let's look at chapter eight, eternity of wisdom. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice on the heights beside the way and the path she takes her stand? Besides the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out loud, To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the sons of men. O simple ones, learn prudence. O foolish men, pay attention. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all you may desire cannot compare with her. You know, it's interesting how many of us chase wisdom nowadays. In fact, if you were to sit down with our, we were to sit down with our kids and ask them, what do you think wisdom really is? How many of our kids would have an answer for that? What does it mean to be wise? And what good is it to be wise? Is it better to be loved by men or to have wisdom and to understand what is going to bring me closer to God? Because that's where we're going to find peace. We can chase social media day and night. We can look for a million likes. But unless we have wisdom in our hearts, I don't know that we'll ever find peace.